Welcome to Bears in Exile. Today is Friday, April the 5th, and this is a quick hit on the indexes. And before we get started, I have to apologize that uh, this is going to be a mess. And <laughs> uh, there's, there's just no way around it. This is going to be a mess. So, without further ado, away we go. Here we are with the Dow. It was down almost 41 points and able to recover a huge majority of its losses, uh, which is pretty darn amazing. Uh, we have nice alignment in all the indicators for further movement to the downside. How about that? This is not optimal. Um, I've talked a couple of times about the desire for more negative divergence, which would require another uh, small peak on the MACD histogram. These are not aligned in uh, a way that, at first glance, screams that that should happen. It doesn't have to happen, but uh, it would be optimal. And what else do we have? Obviously, this is a hammer. If it was somewhere else, it would be a hanging man. Is this at the top of a range? No, it is not. Uh, we had the downtick from two days ago. It was most definitely completely achieved today. Second day out of four. Not bad. Now, why is this such a problem when we have all this nice alignment? Well, if we look at the 60-day or 60 minutes, I'm sorry, which is what I use almost exclusively intraday. We can see the big drop at the open, NDE at its finest, and the slow climb up to this point right here. And in the daily running thread I said, uh, this is getting really weird, and I am out. Um, it was immediately after that that it flew to the upside, uh, very powerful. And what do we have? Well, we have the stochastics ascending, CCI ascending, RSI ascending, MACD histogram ascending, MACD, MACD itself ascending. All this looks good for further movement to the upside. We still have the 14-day RSI moving average moving down. Now, why is this a problem? Because the 60 which is in disagreement with the daily, wants more to the upside. And that's all right, not a big deal. But we do not have enough time, we do not have enough room for these to finish off to the upside and have the 14-day RSI moving average turn. That is the problem. These would need to go up to their top, wherever that may be. Maybe it's all the way to the top. Maybe it's just right here at the 80. We're not sure at this point. It should go up. It should turn around. It should go down, meet the 14-day. The 14-day and the indicator should all move up together, uh, which would align with the time frame with the MACD histogram and the MACD itself coming together, bullish cross, and movement to the upside. And the problem is this demands up and then down and then up and then our reel down which is huge chop huge whipsaw and will really put the screws to everyone now we have a few problems in the positioning of the chart here and keep in mind that all of this is in disagreement with daily all of this uh, and needing to happen. To go up here, I talked about the need for a proper retest or break of the current high. We've been looking for a blow off top. Um, further movement up here, most likely break this high, get people long, right at the time that it would crap out right about here and go down making all these people that go along here get killed after all the shorts get killed here at the break. So you have both sides get killed. 
this sucker comes down and uh, I'm not sure how far it would go I would assume that it is a higher low could be wrong about that at which time the stochastics and everything else will be with the 14 day RSI moving average which will turn up they'll move up together along with the MACD and MACD histogram and that will be our final move to the upside does it break or, ex or meet or fall short of this high I don't know but most people if they see a uh, higher high here and a potential higher low here and it's moving back up they will all go long at which time we'll have the 14 day RSI moving average at a peak along with everything else and we'll begin the proper decline which would then coincide perfectly with the daily so up then down then up then reel down that's what uh, that's what I believe will happen maybe I'm wrong but that's what I believe will happen and it is not attractive you could always have an NDE step in and change the game but at the moment that's what it looks like to me moving on to SPX and SPX down into the long-term moving average bar first hit of the long-term moving average bar and bounce that is what should happen when you come into contact with it especially the very first time we have good alignment in the daily for further movement to the downside but just like the Dow the 60 minute time frame is begging for exactly the same thing that will put the screws to just about everybody and anyone who's been in the market for a while knows the market loves to hurt the most amount of people as much as it can and I can't really think of a situation at the moment that uh, would hurt more people than this theory or this outlook moving on to the VIX this should uh, confirm or at least support the idea of uh, what should be coming our way the VIX gapped way up it hit the 200 day moving average on the dot and fell apart closing almost exactly where it did yesterday able to stay above the long term moving average bar this is very good news for the bears in the medium time frame not the immediate time frame but the medium time frame it will uh, help this to further collapse, compress, and go away, which is what they need in the long term. Um, if the down the SPX do continue up, then yes, this should go back into the bar, maybe even below it. But we do have good confluence in the daily time frame for further movement to the upside. If we look at the 60-minute time frame, and I'm sorry that this is such a mess. We have more room to move to the downside, not a ton, but some. And before you know it, you will need a secondary reset on the VIX to meet the 14 day RSI moving average to finish out its move to the downside. Which, if we have a decent move to the upside, which is after the reset on the Dow and the SPX, this does make complete sense. Now once you have all these things at the bottom and it's ready to move up and assuming that we are at a uh, low that is higher than these lows we will have proper alignment for a in probably incredible move to the upside in the VIX but uh, the next week oof you know possibly terrible um, going on to SPY because we have to look at the volume information and see what it's saying it should at least provide some kind of a story to give us an idea of something and does it I would say yes I think that it does you can have the um, secondaries on the uh, volume positive or green but moving down and still have the market go up we've seen that well seen that here seen that 
here. We've seen that here. What do we have today? On balance volume. That's uh, one of the two majors. And we had a tick down today, approaching the target line. And we've been uh, having a good time with this target line for days now. As it approaches, it tries to get away. Approaches, tries to get away. Approaches, tries to get away as of the last night. And once again is approaching. Actually, it's almost touching. Does that mean that this is going to turn red come Monday and change the game? It's possible. Could it bounce once again? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this is a, uh, a real flip of the coin, only made more difficult tonight because we went so low. The accumulation distribution ticked up today after going sideways for a few days. So this is not a good sign for the bears. We are moving down on the dual volume flow, however, which does put into question whether we could get a red here. We have two reds currently. We have three greens. Two of them are majors. One of the majors is now in danger area once again. And the other is moving in the wrong direction for the bears. So, like I was saying before, total mess. Total mess. Does it provide the possibility for both scenarios? One going down? Yes. One for going up? Absolutely. So, up, down, up, real down. Does that jive here? Bounce at the trigger line again, up, yes. Um, closer to turning red here and ticking down towards the trigger line again, yes. Um, mm, such a mess. Such a mess. I'm going to do everything I can this weekend to see if I can find some sort of other edge that we can use to give us some kind of a advantage, even if it's slight. I don't know if I'll be successful, but, um, you know, it is what it is. And that is what I see. And there it is. As always, all investing decisions are your own. This chart and video for entertainment, educational, and consumption of time purposes only. Thank you.